By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we're going to look at a match where I'm playing still with my Dragon's Search deck. It's white and it's red and I'm playing against Matt who's playing a Disco Troll deck with a blue splash. And this is the second episode in a series of the Reprint Master. So right here on Timmy Talks, every Tuesday, I'm gonna show you a match from that specific tournament. I am still in the group stages. This is my second match. I, uh, well, I don't wanna say what the result was of the first match, you know, cause maybe you didn't watch it. So if you wanna watch it, just check the channel and uh, you'll definitely find episode one. Uh, over there. Actually, I will also put a link to the playlist in the description below talking about the description before I jump into the play um, into the deck text. Uh, what you can do is if you want to skip that section, you can check the timestamps in the description below. There you will find the timestamp called MTG Games. Click on there that will take you straight to the action. There are also specific timestamps for the specific deck. So maybe you want to check out Matt's deck, then you can find the deck text uh, timestamp for his deck and you can do the same for my deck, okay? So you can choose what you wanna see of this video and what you don't wanna see by using the timestamps below. And also, um, this is called the Reprint Masters, right? And it's called that way because players are only allowed to play with cards from 4th edition, Revised, and Chronicles. Now, if you wanna know more about the specific rules, for example, we do play with Mana Burn in this format. If you wanna know all the specifics about this tournament, what cards are restricted, what are the specific rules, how is it different from any other old school rule set that maybe you've played in the past before, simply check that same description below. There you will find more information about the rules and a link to the tournament website where you can find all the decks, all the results. So don't click results if you don't wanna see that spoiler alert, but also you can read all about the rules. Okay, now I've said everything I wanted to say prior to the match. Now let's jump into the deck decks. We're gonna start with the deck of my opponent, Troll Disco by Matt. Let's take a look. And here we see the deck of Matt. And as you can see, it's a Disco Troll deck that with a lot of blue. I said it's a splash of blue. Forget about that. Blue is really well represented in this brew. Now let's first focus on the core of what this deck wants to do, right? Disco Troll, the name uh, comes from the Nevenerals disc and the Setch Troll. Now Setch Troll is one red and two to cast for a 2-2 two -two creature. But when you have a swamp, it turns into a 3-3 three -three creature and you can also regenerate it. So it's a three mana, 3-3 three, three with regeneration. That is insane value in old school. It's really, really one of the best creatures in old school magic. And then you have your Nevenerals disc. If you blow the disc, uh, everything gets destroyed. But of course, when you have creatures with regeneration, you can regenerate them and they survive the disc. And that's exactly what Matt wants to do here with his Setch Troll and the Nevenerals discs. Then he has two other creatures in his deck, very cool creatures, the mighty Sheevan Dragon that I'm playing as well, and Solkanar the Swamp King. Now, Solkanar the Swamp King, first off, really cool that you've included this in your build, Matt. I mean, it shows your spirit. But Solkanar is a 5-5 Swamp Walk, and you gain a life every time a black spell is being cast, either by you or your opponent. Doesn't matter, you get one life. So in this case, I'm not gonna cast any black spells, so it's just gonna be uh, Matt who's gonna cast some black spells. Looking at the color black, by the way, it's really underrepresented in this brew. I mean, you would expect more black when you talk about Disco Troll, but there are only two Terrors and a Demonic Tutor in this deck. He's really chosen to go almost blue Disco Troll, you could say. I mean, look at the, oh, look at all that counter magic there. He's got four counter spells, three Power Sync, two Spell Blast. On top of that, he's playing with four discs. I mean, if he misses to counter something, he can still destroy the whole board, right? He's got Terror, he's got Bolts, he's got Shatters, he's got Fireballs. I mean, there are just a lot of answers in the deck. So what Matt can do pretty much is really, really control the board here. He can counter everything away. He can destroy everything with the disc. And he also has direct damage and he can use Auron creatures, but of course he can also just use it to the face. He can win on direct damage with this deck as well. Simply control the whole match. And when he's got enough mana or enough bolts or whatever in hand, he can choose to play a couple of bolts and then play a big fireball, for example. So, I mean, this looks like a really, really scary deck. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit scared. I'm a little bit worried now about my deck. Anyway, this is the deck of Matt. Uh, really cool that you brought this to the tournament, Matt. Now let's take a look at my brew, Dragon's Search. And here we see my deck, Dragon's Search. And as you can see, it is white and it is red. Maybe first 
talk a little bit about the white part in the deck because it's it's minimal in this deck and the reason i chose white is because white is really good at answering threats right i'm because of white i have access to disenchants and that way i can get rid of cop red cop red is like my nemesis for this deck as you can see all my damage sources or red so i need to get rid of a cop red asap right disenchant is giving me that ability disenchant is just such a versatile and good card because you can also use it to destroy an artifact if need be and then i'm also playing with three swords to plows here's probably the best creature removal in old school one white removes a creature from the game great against for example set scrolls that regenerate you remove them from the game it doesn't matter that they regenerate it's not you know it's not relevant when you when you play a swords and then there's the card in my opinion the best card to play when you're behind balance so i'm feeling really happy with this kind of you could always say almost say white splash in this deck and then when we look at the at the red part creatures is really the thing where we're at here in red they're all flying there are four dragon whelps two sheaven dragons and four granite gargoyles they all fly and because they all fly i think earthquake can do really well in this deck earthquake one red and x deals x damage to each creature without flying and x damage to each player so the idea here is i can play a big earthquake deal damage to my opponent, kill my opponent's creatures, and at the same time swing in with my flyers because they don't die. So it's kind of like a win-win-win situation for me. Obviously, Earthquake is not going to be as good in this matchup because Matt is playing with regeneration creatures, and then Earthquake is just not, not great, you know? And, and Matt's also playing with a lot of dark damage himself, so I'm not, kind of, not quite sure if I want to hurt myself too much and allow him to then next turn finish me off with his fireball or something. So... Yeah, I think Earthquake is not great in this particular matchup. Um, now, when we look at the rest, Power Surge is really a big um, a big deal in this deck. It's actually how this deck started. Um, in the Reprint Masters, we're playing with Mana Burn, and I'm not playing a lot with Mana Burn. So I thought, okay, if we're going to play with it, I want to play with a card that takes advantage of that Mana Burn rule. Now, Power Surge is an enchantment of two red, and it reads, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, Power Search deals X damage to that player, where X is the number of untapped lands they controlled at the beginning of this turn. So they get punished for each land that they haven't used, right? That's basically it. The thing is, if you play without Mana Burn, your opponent can say, you know what, I'm just going to tap everything. Now all my lands are tapped. I'm not going to take any damage. And there's no punishment for that. But when you play with Mana Burn, your opponent will take a damage for each unused mana that comes out of those tapped lands, right? So it's really difficult for my opponent. He really has to use the mana for something. He needs a mana sink. Now, I've got a lot of mana sinks in my deck. First of all, I've got the dragons, Dragon Whelp, Sheevan Dragon, and Granite Gargoyle. All my red mana can go to the dragons, right? And maybe you're thinking, what about the white mana in your deck? Well, first off, I only have four white mana in the deck, right? So when that happens, maybe I'll have to take some damage. But I don't think it's very likely that there will be on the battlefield, all four of them. And you know what, if I have a white mana, one or two, maybe I can use them to pump my um, Mishra's Factory, or I can use them for one of my Gem Day Tomes, or I can use them for one of my X damage spells. So there are still lots of ways to use my mana. So really what I wanna do here is kind of dominate the air, punish my opponent for not using their lands, and maybe finish it with some direct damage. So that's a trick, nothing more, nothing less. This is the deck. Now let's go to the games. Game number one, here we go. Of course, 0-0, zero, zero. Matt on the left with the Island Fish just going to play Matt, by the way. Very cool play Matt. Winter edition. And I'm playing a Soul Ring turn one here with my Wood Elemental play Matt. And passing turn here. So maybe I can find a Dragon Whelp. That would be super turn two Dragon Whelp. Yes, turn two Dragon Whelp. That is pretty sweet. Two, three flyer. Pretty sure Matt has an answer though. Maybe maybe a bolt or one of his terrors. Okay, so he doesn't find red here. Maybe that's, I guess that's good for me. Let's see if I attack if he has a terror or not. Playing a plateau first. Let's give it a try here. Attacking and making it into a 3-3. Three, three. There's the terror by Matt. And then I'm playing a Fower Stone and I'm playing another flyer, the Granite Gargoyle. So I'm really off to a flying start here, a soul ring and um, my flower stone on the board. So I've got a lot of ramping going on. Let's see what Matt can do. We're playing a taiga and there is a shatter on the soul ring. I think that's a good decision because without it, I could have possibly played out a Shivan dragon turn four. It's not gonna happen though. Instead, I'm attacking 
And let's see what else it can do. Another Felwer Stone, one card in hand still and passing turn. So chosen to go in this deck with Felwer Stone over Mana Vault. Let's see what Matt's gonna do. You're tapping four, playing a Nevenerals Disc. That is good news for him because he can blow up my flyer and two of my mana rocks. Let's see if I have a disenchant. First I'm gonna attack, of course. And then I'm gonna play disenchant on the disc. Then I'm gonna play another granite gargoyle and my hand is empty. And because Matt was tapped out, he couldn't counter. He's on 15 now. Next turn I can swing in for four, but we know he's got a lot of removal in his deck, like a double bolt can finish the dreams here because they don't have a lot of red open. There we see a set troll. So that's a 3-3 with regeneration because Matt has a Swamp in play and of course at Underground Sea as well. Attacking him here for 4 is going to drop to 11. And this is great for me. Oh, spoke too soon though. Terror on one of the Gargoyles. That means he's going to drop to 12, taking a damage from his own City of Brass as well there. And the thing is, I want to get him low enough so I can possibly finish it here with... Okay, I guess he wasn't attacking with the Setch, by the way. Finish it here with some direct damage. Looks like he's a little bit in the tank here, deciding how he wants to use his mana. Going for the Tyke in the Swamp, plays a Resurrection. And there's an attack, or sorry, a Regrowth, of course, a Regrowth. Getting back the Terror there, so I'm expecting a Terror now with the attack. There we see the Terror, Gargoyle is gone. Matt is still on 12, playing a Dragon Whelp, so some more pressure from my side. It's really difficult to play against a deck like Matt's because he's got so many answers to creature threats. And he, of course, has the counter spells, although I haven't seen a single counter spell thus far. And there's a lightning bolt on the Dragon Whelp. So again, we see that answer machine of Matt working here, just destroying all my creatures. I'm on 14, playing another set troll. He can hit me for six next turn. And he's still got one red open to regenerate. So I'm playing... Ooh, to the face, and then I'm casting a balance. Oh, this is a great balance. My hand is empty. This is devastating for Matt here. He's losing a land, losing two such trolls, and he's losing a card from his hand, which is a spell blast. Oh man, this is devastating for Matt here. And this is, was a really important moment for me in the game, or else he could have attacked me with two such trolls every turn, and that meant I would die pretty soon. Instead, we're now just top decking, trying to find solutions here. Remember, Matt's on 9. I've got a lot of mana. If I can get him low enough. And playing a Stone Rain here, getting rid of the City of Brass. Just making sure that he cannot make all his color mana, although he has all the duels anyway. So I don't think the Stone Rain was that relevant. Maybe he should have waited with it. Played a City of Brass, playing one of my own, I should say, passing turn here. And Matt's still in top decking mode. Just like me, we're just both looking like, can we get a threat? Maybe I've got an X spell in hand, but want to wait for a good moment to cast it. Playing a strip mine. And it looks like I'm going to strip. I'm going to strip the volcanic island here. There's another volcanic island. Okay, so that strip mine was pretty useless. And another top deck just passing turn here. I think Matt's hand is full of counter magic. Now remember, we didn't see each other's deck lists, of course, beforehand. So I don't know how many counter spells he has. Of course, from that balance, I saw that he is playing Spell Blast. So I'm probably thinking now, since he uses blue more as a splash color, at least that's the impression that he makes, that he's playing with Spell Blast and Power Sync. So I'm not expecting like a counter spell. Looks like I'm going to try to cast something here. I still have my two Jam Day Tomes as well. Playing a Power Surge. Wow, and this is actually also risky for me because I have no Mana Sync. But the reasoning here is, I mean, Matt's got a lot of land. I have a lot of land, but my life total is higher. So I'm just going to take the risk. Looks like Matt is going to look up the rules here. And this is going to be tough. I think if he has a counter spell, it would be probably best to counter it. it. Looks like he's counting. Maybe he's got a power sink in hand. Wonder what he's going to do. And first a bolt. So I'm going to go to 11. Then he's going to pass. He's going to take damage. He's going to drop to 8. And tapping Wheel of Fortune. Can I play something out? Showing in my hand. And... 
I had an earthquake in hand there, so I was probably worried about his counter spells. And he's actually on three because of that power surge. So, I mean, he's having a difficult time. If I manage to play one bolt that he can't counter, I'm actually safe. So he's playing a Nevernerals disc, and now I'm expecting a bolt. Yeah, playing a bolt here. There is the signed Christopher Rush bolt to finish game number one. And I think that Power Search was really the card that gave me the victory here. That Power Search was absolutely huge. I mean, that was the moment that all of a sudden Matt had to take tons and tons of damage. And I believe he dropped to like three life or something. That was really 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 uh the chain game changer here in this first game wow but this was exciting so we're gonna go and dive into our sideboards and we'll catch back up with you in game number two game number two here we go so one game up that means that matt's on the play starting with a badlands passing turn here starting with a mountain and pass there is a strip mine and let's see, and will we see a Felwer Stone here? There's the Felwer Stone, a little bit of ramp, so maybe next turn I can play a Dragon Whelp one turn early. There we see Bluto giving Matt access to Power Sync and Spell Blast. Tapping three here, there is a Bad Moon. Okay, so this comes, sorry, a Blood Moon, not a Bad Moon. Bad Moon's the black one. Ooh, Blue Elemental Blast. So two cards coming in from the sideboard here. So we see a Blood Moon coming from my SB and the... Uh, Blue Elemental Blast coming from Matt's here. That Blue Elemental Blast can do some work against my deck, of course. And there we see a Sedge Troll. And there's a quick response there with the Swords to Plows here. It's taking care of that Sedge Troll. And he is pretty much tapped out. I don't think, you know, his blue is tapped out, so he cannot counter anything. So there's a Dragon Whelp. And followed by a Plateau. Here we see a Lightning Bolt. So the Dragon Whelp is out of this game. Again, Matt has so many answers here. I really need to keep playing my threats. There is a Shatter on the Felwer Stone. Not too bad for me, actually. I mean, possibly I could have played a Sheevan, I guess, next turn. And there is another Blood Moon. And this time, Matt doesn't have an answer. Cannot counter. It has no blue open. In response, he's using his Strip Mine to take care of my basic planes. I think that's a very good decision here. And he's playing a Setch Troll. Now remember, the Setch Troll is just a 2-2 and it cannot regenerate because he does, well, his mana are tapped, but also those two dual lands are now basic mountains. And there I go, finding a Plains, playing a Wheel of Fortune. Oh, I think he discard a beautiful Sheevan though. But things are really looking up for me with a Blood Moon in play. Of course, Matt plays with Nevernerals Discs, right? So it's not going to be too difficult for him to get rid of anything. And I'm casting a Soaring Passing Turn. And he's playing a Swamp. Will we see a Nevernerals Disc here? We see a Shatter instead on the Soul Ring. And then a Pass Turn. And there is a Mountain. Can I play a Threat? My hand's still pretty full. There's probably a Dragon Whelp here for four. Exactly. There is a Dragon Whelp. Will we see a Counter Spell? Of course, he cannot play a Power Sink here because they still have the planes up. So he just has to let this go. But Matt's got plenty of uh, answers left, though. He's got Terrors. He probably bored into extra. He's got Lightning Bolts. So, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting my Whelp to die here. Attacking here, I can possibly pump it. Pumping it for five. That means it's going to go down. And then he plays a Blue Elemental Blast on the Blood Moon. That means he's got access to his mana again. And he plays a Nevenerals Disc. Perhaps he top decked that Nevernerals Disc, or else he wouldn't have played the Blue Elemental Blast, I think. Now it's my turn again. And we see Matt's rearranging his dice. Thank you, Matt, for that. So we can see he's on 18, dealing 5 to him. He's going to go to 13. And I'm casting a Disenchant Counterspell here on the Disenchant. That's unfortunate for me. So this is the first Counterspell I'm actually seeing. So this is giving me some more information about his deck. And this is a very well-placed counter spell here by Matt, or else he could have just attacked here with the Dragon Whelp. I'm still going to do that, forcing him to use the disc. And playing a Felwer Stone, and that's it. Three cards in hand still. I don't think I've got any creatures there, so maybe I can find the right moment to fire off some direct damage. There we see Matt playing a Sheevan Dragon, and he's keeping two blue open. 
Does he have a counter spell? No, he does not. So I'm lucky here that he doesn't have a counter spell, but he does go back up to 18 again. So that five damage from the whelp is now uh, done with. You know, he's got five life back, so he's back on 18. I'm still on 20. These are very interesting games. It's really going up and down and up and down. I kind of thought that I was in the driver's seat with the Blood Moon, but Matt responded really well, managed to play his way out of it. And now we're top decking again, just like we saw in game number one. Very interesting games thus far. And both of these decks are really like close together in their power level, it seems. Here we get the regrowth, getting back a Satch Troll. Probably gonna play it out as well. He's got enough land to do so. Wonder if he does, does not pass turn instead. Interesting choice. So this is giving me some information that perhaps he's got a power sink. I'm just not sure. Of course, I've got a ton of lands as well. Look at my lands, it's crazy. Matt's lands too, by the way, and we're both playing with X spells. And I feel Matt's got a slight advantage here because he's playing with counter magic. His deck is a little bit more versatile. So there we see that Setch Troll, which is now a 3-3 with regeneration. And now the problem comes, okay, am I gonna play a Swords? I'm not sure if I have one, by the way, or maybe a Disintegrate, but then I have the risk that Matt will counter it. So I'm asking Matt how many cards he have in hand. He's got four cards in hand, it seems. I also gotta think about a possible uh, uh, Power Sync, right? So can I play a Disintegrate for three and keep enough mana open? Ooh, it looks like I'm taking a big risk here, playing a huge Earthquake. There we see a Power Sync, so I took the risk. And unfortunately, it didn't work out for me. So I just wanted to try to play a huge Earthquake. Probably have more X spells in hand. At least Matt's out of a counter spell. That's something. He's probably going to swing in for three here. So I'm going to go down to 13. And I mean, it's so hard to get rid of a set Troll, especially when your opponent's playing with counter magic. Oh, Disintegrate! Is he killing me? Oh, it's a dis for 10. Oh, he only needs one more bolt. Remember, I don't have any counter magic. Oh man, getting rid of the Sedge. Playing a Jam Day Tome. Drawing a card, trying to stay alive here. I mean, if Matt's got any way of dealing direct damage, I'm done for. I mean, I'm on three, it's super low. I'm not expecting to survive this one. If I'm surviving this turn, I'm feeling really, really lucky. I'm expecting to die. Oh, Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> Double Bolt on Matt here. Oh, Wheel of Fortune. Oh no. Matt, don't do this to me, man. Don't do this to me. Let me live. Let me live. You can see me praying here. Oh, it looks like I'm dying. Set Troll first. Okay, maybe he's messing with me. Maybe he doesn't have it. Wow, he doesn't have it. Passing turn. Now I need to get rid of that Set Troll. I mean, he's offering me a whole new turn. I have to finish it right now. Playing a Karma. Karma can do some work here. He has one, two, three, four, five, six swamps. So he'll take six damage. And playing a Dragon Whelp. Oh man, I was hoping for an X spell. Maybe I don't want to take the risk and I want to make sure that I can block the Set Troll here because if I cannot block the Set Troll, I die. The thing is, if I play an X spell on Matt's life total, there's a risk that he counters it and then kills me on the back swing with the Set. Looks like I'm tapping something as well here. Playing a Disintegrate on the Set Troll. Now, this is kind of odd to me, to be honest. Because I already have that Dragon Whelp to chump it. And he's now taking damage, going to 9. I think... Could I have killed him? Or not? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. No, no, no. I'm one short. One point short of killing him. That's why I chose the other direction. Yeah, I'm one point short of killing Matt. And I think Matt's going to kill me here now. I hope not. Don't do it, Matt. Brain Geyser. Wow. Oh, this is such an interesting game. Brain Geyser for six. I mean, the chances of him not finding direct... Yeah, there we go. There is... I mean, Matt, in all honesty, you should have drawn that lightning bolt a lot sooner in the game. Wow. What a match here in game number two. We were both... I was so close. I was so close. But well done, Matt. It's a 1-1. And that means we are going to go to an all-deciding game number three.
Game number three, the big decider here. So who's gonna win this matchup here in the Reprint Masters? My second match of the group stages, starting with the Mountain and a Plateau, and Matt is starting with the Volcanic Island and a Badlands passing turn here. And playing Granite Gargoyle, turn number three. I'm kind of, yeah, expecting an answer. There's the Bolt. And uh, I mean, so far, I have to say, both of these games have been super interesting. I think I think these decks are really close together. Let me know in the comments below what you think. I think the power level is really nice, and you can really... I think this, this is interesting magic, to be honest. Playing a Granite Gargoyle, my second one, and there's a City of Brass from Matt. Maybe I'm a slight favorite because I'm on the play. Attacking here, going to drop to 18, at least dealing some damage. And I've got some land open. Maybe I want to keep my mountains open though to protect it. Okay, I guess I don't. I'm playing just another creature here, Dragon Ball, trying to put pressure on the board. I am kind of inviting Matt now to kill my gargoyle with... Okay, he's got a terror, it doesn't matter. Terroring my Dragon Whelp. Because now I'm in Lightning Bolt range with my Gargoyle. Because I only have one red to pump it up. Remember, with red I can give it extra toughness plus 0 plus 1. So that's also always the thing when you play a Gargoyle. Like, do you want to keep red open to protect it? And let's see what he's going to do. Tapping three. Will we see another Setch Troll? There is another Setch Troll. So a 3-3 three, three that he can regenerate as well because he's got Swamps open. There is... Ooh, Spell Blast. Ah, oh, that is unfortunate. Spell Blast on that Swords. That is really annoying. That means he can hit me again next turn. It looks like I'm playing another Dragon Whelp. Ooh, playing a Karma. That's a little bit better, although he only has one Swamp in play. So he's going to go to 14. So the way Karma works is for each Swamp that Matt has, he takes the damage. It doesn't matter if it's tapped or untapped. And he's tapping 4 for a Nevenerals Disc. So he's probably going to blow everything up and regenerate his Troll. Super annoying for me, of course. And do I have a Disenchant here? Playing Disenchant on the Disc. And attacking for 2. So, so far so good, it seems. Tapping 4, casting a Jam Dayton. My hand's empty, though. And he can swing in for three. Playing another disc. Oh, that is very unfortunate. I've got so much on a battlefield. Playing a mountain, attacking for two here. At least I can use the book once. Using the book. Trying to find a disenchant. It looks like I haven't found it. Passing turn here. Now he can blow up. Of course, first attack. Going to put me on ten. Probably going to blow up the disc. Or is he going to wait? So he's going to offer me one more cart with the Jam Day Tome. Attacking him again, and now he's going to blow up the disc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually expected him to do it sooner because now I can draw another cart from that Tome. And uh, losing a lot here. This is a really good activation. Only two cards in hand. Looks like I haven't found anything useful. Just passing turn here. I'm on 10 right now. Matt's on 8. He's swinging, and I'm on 7. I need to find an answer to the Setch, or at least some damage here. Just passing turn, things are not looking up for me now. I'm on four. Only a couple of turns left, playing a bolt to the face, Matt's on five. Trying to play to my outs here. Because playing a bolt on the Setch would only mean that he would need to regenerate it. That would probably give me one more turn. Playing a Bolt onto the Setch. He's regenerating the Setch. I'm not sure if I like this play. Maybe I should have played just on the face. Go to one. There's another Setch troll. My hand's empty. Hoping for direct damage. It's not there. It's a Blood Moon. That's not going to save me. And he's got a counter spell in hand as well. <laughs> Matt, man. I shouldn't underestimate you. Of course you have a counter spell in hand. Well done, sir. Well done. What an exciting match. I don't mind losing a game of Magic if I can lose it like this. This was just very exciting, very swingy. And for me, this is what Magic is all about. There are moments in the game where you think you're winning and then all of a sudden tables turn. All of a sudden tables turn again. We saw a lot of Wheel of Fortunes, a lot of removal, a, a lot of everything back and forth and I don't think these matches were just dominated by direct damage it was really an interesting interesting mix of cards it was also really nice for me personally to play with a card like Karma it's a card I don't play often but 
it's very nostalgic for me because I used to see it a lot back in back in 95 when I was playing. Anyway, this was the second episode of the reprint masters. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this match and of this tournament. And for now, I want to just thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks. If you love what you see and you want to help out the channel, you can do three easy things. First off, hit that like button really helps a lot. Second thing that you can do, leave a comment. That all helps for the algorithm of YouTube. And of course, if you have a genuine question or a comment, feel free to make them. I'd love to answer them if I can. And then the third thing that you can do, if you're new to the channel, hit that like button. That really helps. If YouTube sees that the subscriber count grows, then also they show my videos to more YouTube uh, members that are not subscribed yet. So you're really helping me out by simply subscribing. All those things are completely free, but you are helping the channel. You are helping Timmy Talks grow. Now there's one other thing you can do. You can also become a sponsor of the show and become a patron. The nice thing about being a patron is that you can join the Timmy Talks tournaments like this one, like the Reprint Masters. And you can also join the Timmy Talks Discord, meet all the other patrons and channel members and you know, we talk about magic, we, we post our mail days on there. It's kind of a fun, fun little community that we've got going on. We now have a hundred plus patrons and channel members. So it's, it's slowly getting bigger. And then there's one last perk when you join the Timmy Talks patron page uh, on Patreon. Uh, your name will be in the end scroll after every episode. How cool is that? Talking about that, let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at our amazing, our fantastic, our wonderful channel members and patrons. Of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? The light in the morning. Way hey up she rises. Way hey up she rises. Way hey up she rises. Her light in the morning. Put him in the long boat until he's sober. Put him in the long boat until he's sober. Put him in the long boat until he's sober. Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomaar gezien.